Yeah, thanks, Rick. Um, yep, yeah, so um, I'm here to talk about the uh, Coleman and Mount Cook Magna Tiller Survey. So that was uh, awarded in round three at CI, and uh, it's CI number 76. So I'll just uh, talk a bit about the company first. This is a straight move from the corporate presentation. So currently Hammer's got uh, two projects, one in Mount Isa and one in the Ilgarn. Uh, the one in the Ilgarn is just uh, around the Bronzeway deposit. So in both of those projects, we've got uh, multiple um, drill stage ready targets. And we've got a lot of uh, high quality grassroots targets uh, in both areas. So we've got a, a good team um, on board at Hammer. Um, I know someone mentioned the Gruyere deposit earlier um, today. So Ziggy Lubaniki and Russell Davis are both directors of Hammer and they're associated with the discovery. And currently we're well funded, which is great. So the ISA project, uh, for those of you who don't know where it, where it is, it's uh, between uh, Isa and Cloncurry, it stretches down to the south, down towards Tick Hill. It goes up to the north, just past the Copney uh, deposit, or the Copney prospect. So I've got uh, two JVs, uh, one with Jogmac, um, over about 15% of the project area. And the other JV is with MIM, and that's over the Copney area, just to the east of Mary Kay. So we've, this year we've, we've been, uh, conducting active programs. Um, there's been a lot of disruption in relation to COVID. Uh, we're quite lucky in that we have a Queensland-based uh, exploration team uh, and also Western Australia. Um, for us being WA-based, it's uh, easier to get to um, the Bronson area. I'd just like to thank the Queensland Government up front um, and the CEI uh, program without their support. Uh, We'd be thinking twice about doing certain surveys, so thanks again. I'd also like to thank Mount Isa Mines. Um, one of the um, MT traverses went over an MIM tenement, and they were quite happy for us to uh, go over that area. And also thanks to Jogmac. They allowed us to use, uh, well, the JV allowed us to use some of the data that will be presented uh, this afternoon. So the CEI was a two traverse MT survey. Um, it was a northern traverse over the mount, northern end of the Mount Phil Breccia, and the southern traverse uh, was over Kalman. Uh, the reason we did traverses as opposed to a 3D survey was primarily the terrain. And we just wanted to, you know, we were quite concerned about the productivity um, and that would have a knock-on effect with uh, station turnover. And uh, $90,000 was awarded uh, for the CEI project and we uh, allocated the work to Zong. So the key findings, I'll put them up front. Uh, the Northern Traverse, which is, was across uh, the northern end of the Mount Phil Breccia. We were able to detect the Fountain Range Fault Zone down to about three kilometres. There wasn't a discernible response underneath the Pilgrim Fault. Um, however, the intersection between the Pilgrim, Ballara and Kalman West Faults was discernible on the, uh, on the profile. And in relation to the Mount Phil Breccia, we did get a conductivity response around the margins of the Breccia, uh, but that seemed to um, uh, close off at depth. I think that was probably some type of interpolation issue. In terms of the southern uh, traverse, which went over Kalman, uh, we couldn't see the Pilgrim Fault again in that traverse. Uh, we definitely could see Kalman down to a depth of about two k's. Uh, the Ballara Fault, which is uh, a structure coming back and dipping east back into the Kalman Fault. Uh, we couldn't see that at all. Um, and the MT response over the Kalman, Kalman West Zone, which uh, seemed to come to surface between Kalman and Kalman West Prospect, that was extremely strong response. And that continued down to the depth, sort of around six k's. So just summarizing um, the project area. So that's a, a, a recent uh, 
interpretation that we've got uh, PGN geoscience to do uh, as part of our activities. So the core of the project area is basically on the western side of the Pilgrim Fault, uh, in between the Pilgrim and Fountain Range Faults. So within that zone, the dominant lithology is the Corella Formation, probably all, all aware of it. It's a fantastic uh, unit in terms of the chemical reactivity and also the compositional variation. And we've got a number of uh, uh, Wonga and Williams aged intrusives uh, into that zone. So between these two faults, I'll zoom in a bit here. We've got this area of uh, Mount Full Breccia. Uh, Ham has been looking at that over the last few years as a possible ISCG target, taking soils over it, conducted detailed gravity. Uh, certainly, uh, the soil anomalism is good. Um, we've drilled one target uh, within that area called Shadow. And we're currently reviewing other targets. As part of the JV activities, uh, we uh, conducted a, a reinterpretation of that area, and we've also been undertaking geological mapping. Um, so the uh, Mount Foot Breccia was previously thought to be quite a large breccia zone, but when you look at it in detail, there's quite a high mafic component uh, to the breccia. So those areas in green there are basically dolerite and gabbro intrusions. So the two traverse locations, we got the Mount Fulk Traverse, which cuts across the northern end of the Mount Fulk Breccia, and the Kalman Traverse. And basically they're pretty much the only two roads that cut across those fault systems in the area. And that's really the reason we did traverses as opposed to a 3D server. And you'll notice in some areas like down here near Kalman, uh, we ran the traverse pretty much up a road that's paralleling the major structure in the area. And to a lesser extent up at Mount Phillip, we ran it up, yeah, probably not, not ideally orthogonal to the rest of the traverse. So this just summarizes some of the, the uh, imagery and surveys that we've done over the area. So basically, uh, the uh, Mount Fulp Traverse cuts across the Pilgrim Fault Zone, Ballara Fault, Kalman West Fault, across the northern portion of the Mount Fulp Breccia, then across the Fountain Range Fault Zone. So in terms of the, the gravity response, we've got a number of areas of elevated gravity response. Uh, the inversion uh, indicates that uh, they're slightly deeper than we would expect. Uh, some of these gravity responses can be correlated directly with mafic intrusives. However, there are a number within the Mount Hill Breccia area that we can't yet uh, identify and they're being reviewed on the ground. Uh, the TMI response, you can see there's an area of elevated uh, magnetics there up towards the northern margin of the breccia. This is uh, coming up close to surface at uh, some prospects aptly known magnetite. And around that area as well, we've got elevated soil geochemical response. Now in terms of potassium and thorium, it's quite flat across the bulk of the Mount Phil Breccia, um, but slightly elevated in areas where you've got outcropping corella formation. With the thorium, there's a definite response down the eastern margin of the breccia, and that relates to some felsic intrusives. And with the uranium, again, relatively flat in the core of the breccia area, but we have got two anomalies up on the northwest side. In terms of the inversions, uh, that shows the mag inversion at the top and the gravity at the base. Uh, these were it's, uh, basically a slice straight along the, the traverse area. And you can see that we've got a number of uh, Mag um, magnetic anomalies popping up towards the surface. And just in this area around magnetite is where we get elevated soil geochemistry. In terms of the gravity re response, that's not really helping us too much there. 
uh, we do see a lot of these lobes where they're coming up towards surface. So they can correlate with mafic intrusives, but not necessarily so. So this is the, the uh, MT uh, version across that traverse. So you can see that we've got we've got a response here that does reflect the uh, fountain range fault. It looks adjacent to it in the traverse, but it's actually the traverse is curving around at this point and sort of almost well, it's going at about forty five degrees uh, to the strike of the fault. Uh, the MT response around the Mount Fulbrecher, you can see that there is a elevated uh, conductive zone there that which corresponds to the margins of the Brecci unit. Now in terms of the Pilgrim fault, we didn't we didn't really see any type of linear response at depth. There's a big <laughs> large conduct area of elevated conductivity to the east there. Um, we did see quite an elevated zone of uh, conductive response close to the intersection point between the Lara, Pilgrim and the Kalman West Faults where they're coming together. And we've got to look at that in detail on the surface. So just to summarise what we saw in uh, Mount Fulbrecher Traverse, we've got an oblique view there. So I've got a response that we think is related to the Fountain Range Fault. We've got the dish-like response, but basically it seems to map the margins of the Mount Fulbrecher. Uh, our mag inversion is piping up towards the magnetite area. Um, we've got this uh, Pilgrim fault coming up towards surface, and we do have an anomalous conductive response there. And this uh, large conductive response at depth is, uh, well, don't really have any idea what that could be at present. So the Kalman Traverse, um, it's about 10 kilometres long, about another 50 to 60 stations. Uh, they're at about 250 metre separation. Uh, basically, it's, it's tracking along a, 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 a station uh, track in the area. Um, and this area here, it's pretty much sub-parallel to uh, major structures in the area. Um, what we saw in these couple of stations around this area was quite quite interesting. Uh, in terms of the gravity uh, response, unfortunately, we've never done detailed gravity at Kalman to this point. We really should. Um, we'll get around to it soon. Um, so I'm afraid I can't give you a lot of detail there. In terms of the magnetic response, if you can see my cursor moving up through that uh, panel, uh, Kalman's associated with a weak magnetic ridge. Uh, in ter terms of the potassium and thorium, it's in a uh, zone of low response. And uranium in the area, although there is some uh, uranium uh, associated with Kalman, the major response occurs up along the Pilgrim Fault, especially where you get uh, the overhang jasper light abutting the fault. And you can see that down in the photo below. That's, that marks, that bridge marks the track of the Pilgrim Fault. So in terms of soil geochemistry, I've got uh, gold on the left and copper on the right. Kalman definitely is uh, anomalous in both uh, gold and copper, copper more so. Um, that's 200 and 400 pippi in copper. Um, but this area over here has interested us for a number of years. This is the Hamilton Prospect. Uh, it's sitting on the, the hanging wall to the Ballara Fault. Um, I've interpreted the Ballara Fault as dipping eastwards from this point and terminating on the Pilgrim Fault at depth. And that was part of the rationale for the CEI and the MT survey. In that area of Hammer Time, that uh, anomalous zone is uh, over four kilometres long. This shows a uh, Google Earth image with the extents of the current resource um, at Kalman. You can see the Kalman West Fault in this area, that's uh, uh, silica, uh, but it's um, generally a negative feature. Uh, the Pilgrim Fault up to the east, 
that in this area it's a positive feature uh, with the Kalman structure uh, in the middle. Um, we, a few years ago, we commissioned Peter Gregory to do some mapping over this uh, the Kalman prospect. Did a pretty good job. Um, it shows where the uh, the resource sits. I've projected that uh, that map um, about uh, 150 metres down below surface. Um, the re resource is actually wider, um, but it just shows that it sits nicely in in uh, an envelope there. Um, basically between a dollarite, uh, it's, yeah, dollarite the end on the west side and a matter basalt on the east. And within that zone, we've got uh, meta sediments, albertized kelp silicates. Uh, we've also got a lot of graphitic uh, meta sediments and interestingly, some intrusions which are possibly Williams in age. So this is the uh, MT uh, image uh, for the Southern Traverse. So the main points with this image are that Kalman is present. Uh, we can see it in the data down to about two kilometers. Um, of major interest is the zone to the uh, immediately to the west of Kalman, between Kalman and the Kalman West Shear. And that, that conductivity zone goes down to the, the uh, depth of the survey. Uh, with the Pilgrim Fault, we couldn't see that in the, in the MT data at all. And this is the projected position of the Bellara Fault. And Hammer Time, that I talked about previously, is in this area. And we just couldn't see that the Bellara Fault or anything to do with Hammer Time in the MT data. These responses here are actually in this area, uh, we're turning around the corner and heading north along the uh, the Kalman uh, structure. And this anomaly here is actually, it's possibly a, an offline uh, conductive feature, which would sit further to the north from the Kalman resource. So just summarising uh, with Kalman, uh, we've got uh, the conductivity feature to the west of Kalman. Uh, interestingly, it, there's no drilling um, hitting that uh, the shallow depths. We've got the Kalman West feature is a bit further to the west. Kalman's a bit further to the east. This thing originates in the middle and definitely has good depth penetration. So, you know, we see this as an opportunity to possibly test uh, the survey with some uh, shallow drilling, so down to 250 metres, some RC holes. Uh, also, we've uh, proposed a uh, 3D survey of the area over Kalman, uh, just so we can uh, get the distribution of that uh, conductivity high. So in terms of the CEI model, uh, for the submission that went to the department, we proposed certain things. Um, we were hoping that the MT survey would be able to pick up the uh, Pilgrim Fault. Um, we were hoping to see if the MT survey would pick up the, the fault structure that we'd uh, interpreted for the area. And we were, well, there was a, a possibility that we may have seen some features coming off the Bellara Fault at depth. So the reality of uh, the MT survey along that traverse was that uh, we couldn't really see any faults unless they had a conductivity contrast or something within the fault zone that would cause it to light up. So obviously uh, with the Pilgrim Fault in this area, there wasn't a, an effective uh, conductivity contrast. And that was uh, the same with the Bellara Fault, unfortunately. Uh, as a result, we couldn't really determine uh, the uh, fault structure um, below Kalman and all the intersections. But definitely the, the results of that, uh, that structure going, dipping down towards the uh, west, um, just to the west of Kalman, that's going to be followed up. And also, there's an interesting 
top section conductor that we identified. And with the uh, uh, Bellara fault there, we assumed that there may be some displacement as it went down towards the Pilgrim fault. And although there seems to be a necking in that conductivity response, it's uh, not conclusive. So in terms of M MT, um, the, the survey that we did really only scratched the surface in comparison to uh, uh, images that I've seen uh, in other presentations. So for instance, there at Olympic Dam and uh, the Ernest Henry uh, survey. Um, what we did to try and keep uh, costs um, realistic is we did a six hour residence time for the stations. Uh, there were some stations that were left overnight, but really we probably need to keep those stations out there for longer to get to look deeper. And that's it for me. I just want to thank the uh, Queensland Government again and also Mount Isa Mines and JobLink.